Brighton's finest. This is Juice. Well, I do want to start this interview by saying congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> Cause, you. Because you have released your debut album, Memories, and it's a brilliant piece of work. It really is. I just want to appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I, I can honestly say I, I can see myself listening to this for years and years and years. So, uh, Mate, that's, that's sick. How does it feel to have it out in the public? Because um, I did an interview with you a, a few years back, and I think you said you were pretty nervous to put an album out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty relaxed now, actually. I think because it was like so long, it just got to the point where I was actually like, I just wanted to go out now so I can almost like shed my skin, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? And I've been in that creative process for this record for so many years. And there's a lot of trials and tribulations to get the album even out there and to get the productions that I wanted and the track listing and everything. So I was been pretty relaxed about it because I knew it was, I think I was just overwhelmed that it was actually going to get released and I could release it independently. Yeah. Um, I got a bit nervous like the night before or two nights before I kind of like text my mum like you know are people gonna like you know <laughs> start shouting at me tomorrow and, but the response has been absolutely amazing and I think as soon as I put it out and then you know my social media was a lot of people leaving positive comments and it just made me feel amazing it actually like made me get more excited about the release if that made sense yeah it was like the best way to like relate it is like your birthday yeah and like say you don't really give a f- about your birthday but then you suddenly start getting bare messages through and everyone's like happy birthday mate what are your plans tonight do you know what i mean like you know what's going on have a good one tonight blah yeah. blah blah and um then that like gets you excited for your birthday if you know what i mean so it was similar with the album like i was kind of nervous and you know i just kind of thought it would go out and i didn't really think that so many people would have responded to it in the way they have so that's good, that's good. And it's it's a bit of a unique modern thing is with social media. You, as an artist, you could hear feedback immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, social media, you know, it's got, it's, it's got huge advantages. Mm. But people online as well can always be, they're so opinionated. There's a lot of debates online, do you know what I mean? Every time I scroll into Twitter, there's someone doing a tweet and then someone's calling them out about it and then you're like, there be bare comments about, do you know what I mean, right and wrong, so... Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you do get that immediate response, which in this case was, was great. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, Memories was released on Friday. The first thing you obviously see is the title, which is Memories, as I said, which yeah. is also a track on the album, probably yeah. one of the most emotionally heavy tracks on the album as well. Yeah, 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 for um, sure. Could you tell me a bit about why you chose that as the album title? Like a number of reasons, really. One, obviously, there's a, there's a track on there called Memories, and that's actually one of my favourite records on the album. And it was something that I knew people hadn't heard before. You know, you would have noticed a lot of songs on the record are, like, kind of re-released, or, you know, they've, they've been out in some kind of form. So that was kind of important. But then also, the album itself, because it was made over a long period of time, each track is a specific memory for me, like a specific incident. And it kind of like the album, especially with the relationships, they all kind of sum up. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not like a diary per se, but it's almost like that. The best way of describing it is almost like um, that Harry Potter film. I can't remember which one, but you know when Dumbledore shows him the um, the memories in that bowl and he like pulls it out of his head and puts it in this in this bowl? Yeah, yeah, I do. Remember that scene? Yeah. It's almost like that. Like each song is almost like, you know, me pulling it out of my head and then putting it in, in this collection. So, yeah, um, very much and because, again, the because they were long, long ago, when I listened to it, reminded of that time, all those people or that experience. Brighton's finest. Bringing the artists closer to you. There is a real cohesion with each song, even though it does oh, thank cross you. Uh, over quite a lot of genres. But um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did you work with on the record? Because um, I think last time we spoke, you were working with the people behind Plan B's Strictly Banks record. Yes, yeah, I worked with them on a lot of the tracks, um, Eric and Cassell. I'm actually in rehearsal with them now, <laughs> funnily enough. Um, but yeah, I worked with them on a lot of stuff. But again, because it was over a long time, a lot of people have contributed to certain tracks because what I had with this record is, you know, I wanted to make like a modern classic. I like old school classic music and I, you know, I'm a you know, man of these times and also listen to a lot more contemporary stuff. Mm. So it's difficult to find um, a producer that could uh, encompass all the genres that I was making on the record and um, be able to get the live elements and still have the contemporary elements. So 
I did most of the live elements with these guys, Strictly Bands, because they're great instrumentalists and have a great ear for, for live music and, you know, arrangement. So we would write a lot of the bass lines and, you know, beatbox the drums and stuff together. But then I, uh, on certain tracks like Memories, I took that to, uh, do you know, Grades, he did uh, Neo's record. Oh, cool. Yeah, I did hear little bits of Neo's record in that, certainly on um, Say So, yeah. I did that completely with Grades. That was just Grades produced that. Hmm. Um, he also touched up memories. He touched up a little bit and Need Somebody to Love because I had the old version of that and again wanted to bring in some more contemporary sounds. I thought it was m- missing some synths. You know, I wanted something different for the album version. He also did bits on I Remember, but he came in on those songs right at the end. I had a lot of these songs before Nero's record was out. Hmm. So when I heard Nero's record, I was like, Jesus, who produced this? And then I got in the studio with Grades and, you know, a lot of. The work had been done, but he really added that nice little touch to a lot of those songs. Then another guy called Joe Wills, who is like, I mean, I just think he's a genius, really. He's really, you know, unknown in in many respects. And um, he worked on If I Die and uh, on Memories as well. So I kind of took it to a lot of people. I was almost like the the head or the executive producer on the record. Mm. And I'd go work with Grades for a bit and, you know, get the stems from that and then I'd be like, cool, I need to get the live drums in because this isn't working. Then, you know, record live drums with the Strictly Bands guys and some bass lines, then maybe go back into grades. So it was kind of, it kind of all worked, it worked like that. Mm. But I've got, the, you know, and then string arrangers as well, that strings on If I Die, worked with a woman called Rosie, who was amazing. She's just incredible. So a lot of people, man, a lot of a mix yeah. of people for, for different tracks. Yeah, I'm surprised because um, there is such a, togetherness with all each song and uh the list you've kind of read out there you just would never have imagined it yeah yeah well i mean it was you know i, I listen to albums mm. and what and when i what i like about projects and albums is that they all feel like the same do you know what i mean they're from the same family um so i worked really hard on that in the mix um i mixed it all with the same person and um that was an opportunity for me to bring you know to bring everything together and i think you know, because I was across everything, um, I was able to, to um, you know, clearly kind of depict, you know, what kind of space we were going for. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy because that was one of my worries on the record was, um, you know, is that everything's going to sound so different. You know, there's a lot of genres on there and a lot of different people working on it. And, um, you know, I was, you know, I, I really didn't want that, you know, things to feel so separate. So it was really nice. It's really nice when people say that it, you know, it feels uh, cohesive and um, that it runs smoothly because, you know, that's was something that was very important to me in making the record. Mm. Well, it is a truly beautiful listen. And, oh, uh, thank you. Not only are your vocals on point the whole way through, but the production and the uh, instrumentation are absolutely sublime as well. Oh, amazing. Thank you very much. Um, Appreciate that. So what's next? Like, uh, you've got this European tour, which uh, <coughs> starts on the 27th of March, is it? Or... My tour starts on the 27th, and that's in the UK. We're only doing three dates, but that's my headline tour. And then the support tour starts on the 1st of April, and that takes me up to the end of April. Then after April, you know, I'm in a new space where I'll, uh, I've almost got a blank canvas. Do you know what I mean? I mm. want to start thinking about... I've obviously been working on new material over the years as well, you know, not just those songs. Yeah. So um, it's also thinking about what I can do with them and, you know, what where I want to go next, but... I think right now I'm just enjoying having the record out and doing the promo and playing these shows and you know I've got a couple of ideas of when I want to start releasing other stuff and what I want it to be but until I kind of really zone into that I don't want to you know I don't want to say too much but definitely expect some uh, more music coming a lot sooner than um, you know it, it, it took this record to me. Brighton's finest. This is Juice. Juice.